I think that that's a good segue into what our main topic today, uh, which is talking about Kaladesh Remastered, specifically talking about Kaladesh Sealed. So, uh, it looks like I'm going to be doing a lot of the, the brunt of the talking today, not only because uh, Adam was busy today and didn't get a chance to play any Kaladesh, but also because I played a lot of it today. Uh, I will say that I have 10 packs and three draft tokens waiting for me. That's true. Yeah. Did you, uh, you got the, I uh, bought that the $30. Pre-order? Yeah. Yeah. That pre-order is, is actually pretty sweet. I think three draft tokens pretty much makes it worth it. Like, yeah, that, that's the only reason I bought it. Yeah. And is, you, get... you know, three drafts, $10 a draft. That's a fair price for a draft. That's cheaper than paper drafts. So yeah, for sure. I went with it and you get like what a card art and a sleeve or something. Yeah. Yeah. Got card art, a sleeve and 10 packs yeah 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 i actually i i like that sleeve a lot and oh you also got a i think you got an avatar too don't don't quote me on yes that. you you did yeah so he now, that, now that you say that i remembered it yeah so uh yeah uh so as a as a quick note i played sealed today for those of you who don't know what sealed is sealed is a form of limited magic where rather than drafting and you picking a card out of each pack and passing it and making a deck built on the signals of what you get from the packs sealed is you get six packs you open them you build with them uh this is my favorite magic format especially when we're talking about limited like sometimes i get into construct and i'm like oh yeah this is fun blah 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 but when talking limited i would much rather play sealed than play draft and uh so this week is kaladesh remastered sealed event and it's only for this week and since i have work almost every other day this week today was the day that i had to play as much sealed as i possibly could Real quick, before you move on to actually talking about the topic. Sure. Why do you think you prefer Sealed over Draft? Um, okay, so I'm going to be answering... I, I, I'll say I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be answering part of this later, but I'm gonna, I'll, I'll be able to say that the reason I like Sealed better than Draft is because you're tools are limited further than they are in draft so Hmm. with uh with draft you have the opportunity to change your fate right like you've got the ability like if you're drafting and you're in black and then black is starting to look lean you can pivot you can change your idea. You can go into another color. You can completely change colors. You have some leeway on that on that situation. And draft is a skill based game of you figuring out where your deck's going to go based on what your opponents are doing, and that's super cool. That's really fun to do. But for me, sealed is better because it's like. All of the pieces were handed to me almost at random, right? Like, the pack you just got would be an amazing sealed pack because you got, like, five or six black cards, and one of them's a black rare. So... You got seven. Seven black cards. Seven black cards, yeah. So, seven black cards, one of them being a rare, that gives you a place to be for sealed. For draft, all it does is give your op- opponents the idea that black's open all the way around the board because everybody's going to get to take a, a black card out of that pack. But in draft, that kind of pack could get you into a position where you're playing in a color. If you don't get packs like that, you got to make it work. Sometimes you're going into three colors. Sometimes you're going into four colors. Not because you want to. Not because it's good but because that was the restrictions given to you by the packs that you picked up. I, we can get into this later uh, when you talk more about it. 
I like draft for the same basic reason you said that sealed is better. Yeah. No, I I, and- I, I feel that sealed gives you too many options. Really? But we can get into that later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about it as we go. Um, so, uh, re- real quick, are there specific cards you're going to be mentioning? Uh, I might bring up a card or two. Uh, if you if you want to switch over to me, I've got the uh, the card spoilers oh, up. Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, no, it's good to have this up anyway. So this is a Kaladesh remastered. And again, just as a as a note, Kaladesh Remastered is cards from Kaladesh and cards from Aether Revolt, the second uh, set in that pseudo that small block or whatever you want to call it. And they were put together and then shaved down to three oh three, yeah, three hundred and three cards in the set. So, uh, they kind of pared the themes down a little bit so that it gave it a good draft centric focus. Uh, each dual color has sort of a signpost to go into blue, white is flyers, green, blue is energy, um, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. Red, white is Boros, or Boros is, a uh, uh, equipment and, uh, and vehicles like that kind of stuff. Yes. What's Fabricate? I'm not familiar with Fabricate. Okay. So yeah, uh, Fabricate is one of the standing mechanics in this. We'll run through the mechanics real quick. Fabricate is when it comes out, when it enters the battlefield, you can either put that many plus one, plus one counters on the creature or create that many one, one servo artifact tokens. So this guy who's two and a white for a two, two with Fabricate one. He, you can make him a 3-3 three, three instead, or you can have a 2-2 two, two and get a 1-1 one, one artifact creature. Okay. Yeah. Fabricate is a really cool part of this because there's sort of like a counters deck in green-black, and you want to pick up the Fabricate creatures in that because you can, like, augment the way your, uh, your stuff will uh, grow based on... Uh, the the fabricate you can and if you absolutely need an extra blocker just make servos it's cool uh and then uh another thing that was in this set is uh the vehicles vehicles are the uh artifact creatures they're artifacts that become artifact creatures yeah you'll know them when you see them they're uh they got an interesting little, uh, yeah, there it is. So, uh, they come out normally as regular artifacts and then you can crew them to turn them into artifact creatures with the power and toughness that you see. Crew means you have to tap a number of creatures until you've reached the power that the crew number is. So the one we have on the screen, Demolition Stomper, is crew five. (laughs) <laughs> uh, real quick I just want everybody to know it's 2 for 20 dine in delivery and to go at Applebee's Yeah, and also we are not sponsored by Applebee's <laughs> but Applebee's if you're listening <laughs> if you're listening <laughs> we will sell out absolutely 100% in fact anybody watching this video <laughs> if you would like to sponsor a stream give yeah. us money yeah we'll absolutely take Game it up. yes uh, you do <laughs> I don't know how much I don't know how many standards I have, but GameStop, we'll we'll talk price and then we'll see what's up. <laughs> okay, so uh, Demolition Stomper is Crew Five, so you'd have to tap at least enough to make five power in order for you to be able to turn Demolition Stomper into a creature. I might have missed something. Mm-hmm. So I'm tapping creatures here. Yes, and so you could tap one five five. Like, if you have a 5-5 five five on the board, you could tap that, and that meets your 5 power requirement. Or you could tap a 2-3 and a 3-1. Oh, or power, so just power and toughness. It, power. It, yeah, we're, yeah, we're just... Power's talking. not its own special thing. No, power just means it's okay. power. Yeah. I'm, I'm tracking. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, just like uh, normal uh, artifact creatures, though, these will not have haste on the first turn. So, if you are playing this and you're brand new to the situation... 
do not make the mistake of trying to crew a vehicle that you just put on the field and get it swinging. Because unless you have a way to get it haste, you just tap however many power of creature to look at a 10-7 that does nothing. <laughs> so, you can also do that at instant speed, which means you can do it to block your opponent's creature with the vehicle that you have. There's a lot of vehicles in this, and they all do different things, but they're usually just stompers. This one here, Demolition uh, Daredevil, that was... Or Draxter. Daredevil, 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 yeah. Daredevil Draxter. Uh, this one was very good for me today. When, when I had this, this was primarily the way that I not only did eight damage, but drew two cards. So, like, it's legit. And some of them have effects that will work even if you don't turn them into vehicles. Like, there's one that's like a five-cost mana rock. You just tap it for one mana of any color. But it's... Oh, oh there it is. Uh, Cultivator's Caravan. Uh, you can tap it for one mana of any color. You can use that without crewing it. It's just an artifact. You can do what you want with it. But if you decide to crew it, you can make a 5-5. Five five. So it's a versatile way of doing things. You can also use vehicles that were already uh, crewed and turned into creatures to crew other vehicles. So you can like tap a 1-1 one, one to crew 1, a 2-3... And then tap that 2-3 to crew something that has 2 power or whatever. So it's like okay, stacking so, vehicles on vehicles. So I could tap something to get the 3, mm -hmm. make and, it 5-5, five, five, and then use that. Yeah, you could tap that 5-5 to, five, five to make that 10-7. Correct. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so that's the way those kind of play together. Uh, go ahead and scroll down one set there. Adam, so uh, the other one of the other mechanics in this is energy. You'll see over here on uh, that, that one too. Uh, getting energy counters is something that the player obtains. It's a, uh, it's a player counter that go, ticks up. And you can spend it for resources for things in this set. So like console of turret here, you can tap it to gain a uh, energy or you can tap tap it and pay three energy to deal two damage to target player or planeswalker so it has its own build up and its own payoff a lot of the creatures in the set have energy build ups and payoffs and it is really really fun so this energy just accrues yes you just so if i tapped him three so played him turn three tapped him tapped him turn four tapped him turn five turn six I could do that. Yeah. The, the pay three. Okay. Yep. So it's not like mana where it expires. Exactly. There's no awesome. expiration on energy. As long as it's sitting there, it's sitting there. And you can do stuff in constructed formats. You can like proliferate it since it's a counter type that you can proliferate. There's a green black creature in this set that whenever you add counters to anything, players or your own creatures, it doubles those counters. Or it doesn't double them, it, it adds plus one. So you can use this and basically get two energy each time you tap it. And you can play out something that gives you three energy and it gives you four energy instead. Like, it's bonus. It's bonus. Uh, and then we talked about Fabricate. We talked about Vehicles. We talked about Energy. Um, I think that that's pretty much the big things oh improvise that's right so improvise is an effect that's similar to delve or uh one that you might know adam convoke do mm -hmm. you remember convoke so Lovely. uh improvise what it does is you can tap down artifacts and it will count as pain one color list toward this thing's mana cost so if you have six artifacts on the board, you could pay, you could tap all six of those and pay, play this for one extra mana. Okay. Yeah. It's, Seems that there's a fair amount of artifacts, so I guess that's okay. Oh yeah, there's a lot of artifacts in this set. So uh, Artifacts Matters is a real big portion of this set. So uh, the, the extra uh, stuff that you get 
through improvise can be very good. I didn't play any improvised decks today, but I didn't get any improvised cards, so uh didn't make sense to. There we go. So uh yeah, Aetherflux Reservoirs in this set, which uh is a huge card in commander and is actually just a pretty dope card. It's a rare. I didn't get it today, but I'm looking forward to playing a sealed deck with it because all you got to do is play tiny things, and it's kind of like playing a storm deck. So, uh, totally, totally worth the time and effort. Oh, by the way, while there is all these uh, artifact um, matters cards, there is also quite a bit of artifact destruction. So be ready for your stuff to get uh, blown up. There's that snake I was talking about, Winding Constrictor. Uh, if one or more counters would be put on an artifact or creature you control, put that many plus one instead. And if you would get, uh, if you as a player would get one or more counters, you get that many plus one instead. This card basically won me every game I won today. Uh, and then World you, of, mm -hmm. you, how many, uh, how many seals did you do? Okay, Not well, games, but actually... So, uh, I ended up getting through about five sealed uh, events today. five Somewhere between five and seven. I wasn't fully keeping count. Uh, but uh, I got a good number in, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was very uh, sort of... It, it's a much slower format uh, than some of the previous seals have been. Uh, a lot of people who play during Amonkhet Remastered might know that Amonkhet is a really fast, limited format. You know, you're just like playing aggro. You're like just stomping down creatures, turn them sideways, all this stuff. There's a lot of death touch in this set. There's a lot of removal. There's a lot of, uh, like, tricks, like combat tricks that are important to pay attention to. So this format is much, much slower. Which means you can take your time and build up things that are uh, more important. And get some heavier uh, beaters in. Uh, but I think I should probably talk about how I did today. So, like I said, I played uh, something like... Uh, five to seven sealed events. Each one, you could lose three matches before you were out. They're all best of one. Uh, I went 0-3 at least four times. <laughs> is, is it you just didn't... <sighs> You didn't I, have good cards that many times. You don't have a good oh, handle man. on this the format, or I mean, there's it's a combination of things for sure. Um, I would Ooh. say uh, one of the one of the things that I did off of this that I don't normally have to worry about is I did not branch into three colors very often, and I really, really should have, and. We'll talk more about this when we get into questions later, but one of the things that is important is to find the line between when you play all of your good stuff and when you play two colors. Like when you try to keep yourself in a lane so that you're being consistent, right? This is definitely a set that going three colors is not going to hurt you, and in fact, you absolutely should because uh, you will not get enough good things in two colors to justify staying in two colors. Even with artifacts being a major portion of the set. So, uh, my first two uh, O3s were that situation. They were just like me getting used to the format trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work, and uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, I had one 6-3, which is all, all of your, uh, your payout back plus three packs. 
or just about all of your payout back plus three packs. And that was one of the games that I was like, I'm deliberately going to go three colors. I'm going to play the best cards in my pool and see what happens, you know. And in that, I was able to play more, like, late game good stuff, like six-cost creatures. And I was able to play a lot more removal because I was in three colors. So I had three colors worth of removal. I, uh, interrupting you real quick. Mm-hmm. I like uh, the mana fixing lands. Yeah. Here. So, yes, Kaladesh. I like the, yeah, you don't gain a life. You don't scry. Whatever. But it's not going to be turn five. I've been waiting for my six drop. I draw a land and I'm like, well, I can't play it this turn because mm-hmm. this guy goes in that, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a uh, this is a really interesting uh, cycle. So the, the cycle on this one is it enters the battlefield tapped unless, oh, unless you, you have two. two or less. Yes. Okay, so turn one, turn two, it's good. Yeah, turn one, turn two. Or turn good. three. And then after that, it comes in tapped. I actually like this grouping because too often do you have quick access to to double color land, and also have no late game shame for double for double color I have land. No way. Uh, you you don't pay any price for playing a double land later on in the game. Gotcha. Um. So this one is like, yes, you do want to play these in the deck, but you you wouldn't want to play a constructed deck that has four copies of both of these two lands, right? If you're playing green, blue, black. Because after the first two hit the board, you've made it so that the rest of these are tap lands. So it makes you stick into two colors for constructed if you want to run these efficiently. Um, but for sealed they're fine like they do they do exactly what they needed to do i've run one or two and uh i think that it's it's a very very good uh addition to the dual land cycles i think and i'm pretty sure all 10 are in here i don't know for sure but uh the colors that i favored today uh were green and blue because I really liked the energy uh, cycle. I thought that that was really cool, and uh, I experimented a little bit into black, which black was very fun when I got the cards that I needed for it. Um, red black looked like it was super interesting. There are some really cool red black cards, but uh, most of the games I won were like the green black counters deck because I got that constrictor that we were talking about and then uh, would just get a bunch of fabricate creatures and hunt the weak, which puts a counter on something and then makes it fight it. So with the snake out, it puts two counters on it, makes it fight it. And it was just, yeah, there it is. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. That creature fights a creature you don't control. So with the constrictor out, two plus one counters on it, fight something. It's legit. Uh, I also got an Oath and a Johnny in one of those uh, groupings, which is uh, when it enters the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control. Planeswalkers you cast cost one less to cast. I didn't have any Planeswalkers, but I didn't need them. I had the constrictor and like six creatures on the board and then i gave them all two plus plus one plus one counters and swung in for game so that was like a legit way to do it also ornithopters in this set (laughs) uh but yeah we you can this deck is definitely about like the set seems to be very much about going wide and trying to uh outclass your opponent particularly in the air there's a ton of flyers in this set um a lot of the decks i saw winning early on in the day were red white vehicle decks um just because there are uh creatures that when they uh when they crew a vehicle it gives the vehicle an extra ability so real quick Mm -hmm. what does pacify cost 
So pacify is one and a white. One and a white, okay. Yeah. And this one is two and a white, but it's also it adds crew. And it adds crew. You can't crew. So, which in this set is super important. That card wrecked me. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, I, I definitely I definitely lost a lot of games today, but I learned a lot about the set. And uh, I'm not... I'm not too hurt that that happened. I'm only hoping that I get some chance to redeem myself. I haven't made it through all of the gems that I set aside yet, so it should be okay. And I mean, look at it this way. You've got a decent jump on on your Kaladesh yes, collection. Yes, that is true. I have like an extra 40 packs to open currently. Yeah, and, and if, if you had been winning... You would have cracked less sealed pools. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, should have, lining. you should have lost faster. Silver lining. Well, I, I don't think I could have lost much faster on some <laughs> of them, to be honest. <laughs> it was turn it was, one mountain. I scoop. Oh man, I had I had games where uh, I had hit midday. And I only eat once a day usually, so I had not yet eaten my my meal for the day, and so I was already not in a great mood. But I had suffered another O three, and I was so frustrated that time that the first game I played, I uh, played this red blue deck because I had gotten Sahili Rai and I thought it was going to be awesome, and I got. I'm sorry, you got a what? Uh, Sahili Rai, yeah, that planeswalker. Uh, she can plus one to scry one. I think that's the avatar. <laughs> she she plus ones to scry one and deals one damage to each opponent. She minuses two to make a copy of a creature or an artifact. It gains haste until end of turn and it becomes an artifact if it is an artifact already. Uh, you sacrifice that token at the end of the step, at the end step, and then ultimate is search your library for three artifacts. Uh, with different names and put them onto the battlefield. So I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to get her up to seven and then I'm going to uh, minus her, get a 10-10 on the board and a, and a, the, the crew 5-10-7 and just, just like have all these huge creatures up. And that did not happen. I got wrecked hardcore by uh, little tiny flyers. <laughs> and so... Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that, but I will say... I thought this guy had a guitar for a second. <laughs> no, that makes sense. I see that. Fire Patrol. I'm like, oh, he's 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 a rock star yes. with a, a jetpack. Yeah, he uh, he he moonlights as a uh, as a as a guard patrol for Aspire. <laughs> During the day, he's he's busy getting his music career off the ground. Ah, uh, off the ground. Anyway, because he has flying. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, God, I wish there weren't all these ads on the site. Is this, this is MTG Arena Zone? I'm going to remember that. I'm remembering this. MTGAZone.com. That's right. If you guys need a sponsor, let us know. Or if you want to sponsor No, us, no, no. Us no. Us Do not let us know if you need a sponsor. You can let us know. We are we're not just, just going to say here. no. We are yeah. not interested. We're just going to say no. If, you, if can, you guys need You can ask us. But if you <laughs> want to give sponsorships. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, so uh, um, by we mean this is a great website, super great. We would be happy to be sponsored by such a fine website, and, and clearly you have the money because Applebee's and GameStop are paying you a ton. <laughs> right. Oh man. Anyway, so uh, do you have any other questions about the set, Adam? Anything you want to talk about? Uh. No, I don't think so. Revolt seems to be... I've seen that pop up in quite a few cards. Yeah, yeah. Revo oh, Revolt is the other one that I didn't mention. Revolt is an effect that just means you get whatever the card says you get if a permanent has left the battlefield. A permanent you control has left the battlefield. So... I, I feel like that hasn't been keyworded before, but that sounds really familiar. Um, You might remember from, uh, like... You were playing during a time period where Innistrad was usable, and Innistrad had a thing called Morbid that was when a creature died, 
on your side of the field. Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking. You got effects. This is similar to that, except this works if you bounce it or if you blink it or anything like that. As long as it's left play in any fashion, you get the revolt trigger. So uh, a lot of them are just like, you know, put a plus one, plus one counter on the creature or something like that. But there are some of them like this one that like you get to return a permanent with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you swing with a with a small creature, your opponent's like, haha, block it, and you're like, okay, uh, play this and get it back on the board. Um I might be not thinking about this right, and there may not be any like blink or flicker cards in this set. Mm -hmm. There are. But if I flicker him, mm -hmm. he would set his own ability off, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Yep, if you if you flicker him, he will set off his own ability. Okay. That sounds like it could be abused. Yeah. It's it's uh one of the main reasons that they pulled uh uh Felidar something. It's it's a creature that blinks when it enters the battlefield. Uh it blinks something when it enters the battlefield. So not only because it is a power combo with Sahili that creates infinite tokens, but also because it made things far too easy for Blink decks in this set and Revolt decks. Oh, man. What's that god? That god that Thassa? I hate. Thassa? Yes. Yeah. And a term Ugh. Blink. Yeah. I mean, if you've got a, a decent revolt creature on the board, that could be something potentially uh, good for you to do. There's a black one that does neg three, neg three to a creature your opponent controls. On I mean, any three. of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> any of them, you're getting a free something every turn. Yeah. Free something. It's, as long as it's a good enough something, it's absolutely worth it. And and usually it is. Uh, Yeah. But, yeah, my experience with the set so far, it's slower. Go ahead and play three colors. If you're playing sealed, you're not going to hurt anything. Uh, I haven't done any drafting on it. I will probably try to do some drafting before the next time we uh, meet. Yeah, there's, I'm a, liking this right here. there's a new instant bounce uh, for Adam's newer version of Gummy Bears, which is... Yeah, but my gummy bears is standard. This isn't going to be legal and standard. Nope, you're going to have to play historic gummy bears. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. That card's not that great anyway. It's That card would be great in my deck. It's fine, <laughs> but honestly, it's it's really sad. I actually I hate it because your gummy bears deck, back when we were playing, that bounce deck was pretty, pretty solid because there weren't nearly as many enter the battlefield triggers as there mm. are now. Like now, every time you knock something back to your opponent's hand, they're like, fine, I get to draw two more cards and gain life and uh, kill a creature. And, you know, like, because... Yeah, but like I said, it's not supposed to win. Sure. It's just... Sure, but it's, it's sad that uh, with as much value as there is on enter the battlefield now it's not as viable as it could have been, you know. Uh, just an annoyance more than anything. Uh, I mean, you just described gummy bears, though. It's true. <laughs> just an annoyance more than anything. <laughs> uh, did you win? Yes, I won. How long did it take? Way too long because he kept putting my stuff back in his hand. And then he drew seven cards. And then he put my stuff in my hand again. <laughs> yep. And then he played a Sphinx. Uh, and then he played another Sphinx. And then I had to deal with them. Mm -hmm. uh, red, black, red Black Artifact Matters looks like it's good in this set. Blue White Control looks like it's pretty good in this set. Uh, green White or Green White Black or Green Black Counters also is good. Uh, there's quite a few things that you can do in this set. So I think that there's plenty for people to play around with. So far, even though I had a bad experience with it today, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting in some more sealed games before sealed goes away. And how long, how long is it up? So it'll be sealed for the next week. Next Thursday 
uh, sealed is pulled. I might try to do a seal this weekend. Yeah. We'll see what happens. You should give it a shot. I'll go five color good stuff, just like you said. Yep. And the... <laughs> you said push mono red? Push mono red? Push, red deck wins? push mono red. Yep. Go for it. Why not? <laughs> so, Matt, I did what you said. Uh, I had four white mythics, but I decided to go ahead and go uh, mono red with uh, 18 artifacts. <laughs> And, uh, Adam, you're so stupid. Why did you do that? I went 0-3. Oh. <laughs> uh, I never lost a game. <laughs> I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> totally, totally totally handled it. Just face palm. No it. game went longer than turn five. Like it, it, Everything clicked. All of my opponents drew one mana, <laughs> and that's it. They had to mull down to four every game. <laughs> this deck is magic. Oh my god, he broke the code. <laughs> Some programmer in the wizard's basement was like, no one will ever put these cards together. <laughs> if anyone puts this exact 40 card concoction together, including the arts on the lands, the, it's a, then the smoother it, will break for your opponent. <laughs> It's like some weird combination of like the Konami code, right? And Freakazoid, <laughs> right? <laughs> Why was... did you choose those cards? A cat ran across my keyboard. Right. It chose for me. That is that. Can I say that that premise was the best, like nonsensical premise of that era of television? Like I, I love that show, and I love the idea that the cat just randomly hit the keystrokes. The probability of that being like so close to zero, it's insanity, and it's just like, yeah, oh, what is this? Oh, I'll just hit delete, and it just like totally works. <laughs> so good for those. Tune in who... next week for our Freakazoid, uh, Freakazoid podcast, Freakazoid rewatch, Freak me, Freaky you. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in tonight. Uh, just as a real quick reminder, we have a Kofi. Go check out the Kofi. Donate to the channel if you want us to do more stuff that requires money to do it. Your help will make the channel grow. Like, subscribe. If you are not following this channel on Twitch right now, hit the follow button. It will really help me out. If I get up to a certain number of uh, followers, I can actually, you know, get ads put on before things so that maybe we can get in a little money that way uh, visit the youtube channel subscribe check out our stuff and uh i think that's it do good things 